Did you know you were gay then? Oh, I knew I was gay for like my whole life. Okay. I can see what this TikTok thing's gonna do. I had like maybe 150, 200,000 followers at the time. Two weeks in, I hit a million followers and then it was just a million every two weeks after that. It was insane. Like What? Getting fired from Best Buy was like the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> I was gay and parents are Catholic. I was gonna ask. Yeah. So when I came out, they tried to do like conversion therapy. Oh man. And it didn't work and I got caught with a girlfriend. I recently learned I'm autistic. So <laughs> I'm like figuring this whole social thing out myself. Okay. Um, hello, grown-ups. Here we are on the pod. Got a great one for you today. You may know her from her platform handle name, which is only Jayus. Turns out she has an actual name, which is Bella Avila. Um, which I also learned today. <laughs> um, it was a great talk. I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you. We covered a lot of ground from uh, festivals and EDC to uh, having a platform blow up and what it's like to be recognized um, to growing up gay in a religious family um, and getting to a better place with that, uh, mental health, all sorts of things. And that she was a Neds fan growing up. It was a good time. Um, I got to meet Bella at her birthday this year, which I was invited to by a friend and uh, got to celebrate her birthday with her and her wonderful community. And it was cool to get to meet in real life and asked her to come on the pod. And she did. And we had a great talk. And I think you'll enjoy it as much as I did. Go uh, follow Bella on all the things, only Jayus, and uh, thanks for being here, part of this growing up journey. Enjoy this talk. Let's make a podcast. Ah! <laughs> oh, uh, I just realized, hold on, I don't know your last name. Do you have a last name? No, actually. No. <laughs> Are you just Madonna? Is it just Bella? Uh, Avila. Avila? Bella Avila. Bella Avila. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful name. Okay. Good. Now I'm prepared. <laughs> uh, let's make a podcast, guys. Hi. Uh, welcome to Growing Up, Bella. I'm so excited. This is really cool. Thanks for being here. Uh, you know, we're growing up and here we are Current. to talk about it. Yeah. Bella Av Avila. Mm -hmm. I just learned your full name. Yes. What I know you as is your handle, which is only Jayus. Most people know me as that. Yeah. They don't even think I had it. Like They thought my name was Jayus. Yeah. What, what's the hand? What is it? Jayus is an Indonesian word for somebody so unfunny, you can't help but like laugh along with them anyway. I thought it fit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Dude, you just blew my mind. And I didn't know that I was gonna like blow up. But if I did, I probably would have picked my name. But, like, <laughs> right. You know, like how PewDiePie is like Felix and Mr. Beast is Jimmy. I did Right. I wanted something. And you're only Jayus. Mm -hmm. So unfunny that you have to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny that that's what you chose. And then you didn't realize it was going to blow up the way it did. I think it might attribute to why I did. Right. Like it's cooler than just it, my name. It is cool. I mean, yeah, I get it. I made my handle like work harder years ago because a friend used to call me that. And like, it's still funny and mm -hmm. cute, but like then people think it's my last name and it's Workheiser and I'm just like, uh, it's too late to change it and whatever, dude. I don't even correct people anymore. They just like respond to Jayus like in public, like Jayus, I'm like, oh my God, hey, <laughs> how are you? That's, it. <laughs> That's great. So people call me Bella and it like triggers me. I'm like, do I actually know you? Like, is, do you it's weird. Is that even my name anymore? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. So cool. I'm glad to meet you. I, I, uh, Bella and I met, <laughs> Bella and I met because I came to your birthday party this yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, randomly. I didn't invite him. He just kind of showed up. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Bella had a ton of close friends who knew her well, and you guys are all hanging out, and I just kind of showed up on the beach like, hey, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, just had a bonfire, played some volleyball, yeah. it rained. It was, it was yeah. a whole thing. You had pillow fights? <laughs> pillow fights. Yeah. I made these pillows, and then I made my friends, like, beat each other up in the sand. It was... Yeah, it was fun. That actually, I hope it felt good for you looking at it from the outside. I was like, this is a great birthday party. Like <laughs> everyone was like having a great time. Everyone seemed great. Mm -hmm. Like it seems like you have a good community of friends around you. Is that true? I do. Yeah. Like all those people are so cool. And like 
in LA, like it's really hard to find like good people. Yeah. And I'm thankful to like have found so many good people. How'd you do it? The internet. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly the internet. And then just like meeting people like through different events that the internet has set up and like brought to me, I guess. No way. Yeah. So yeah, I'd noticed like a bunch of them were creators as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, also like the lesbian community. That's how. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. That's actually why I was at your birthday. You met me through the lesbian community. <laughs> actually, yes. yes. And <laughs> you might be shocked at home to know that I am a part of the lesbian community. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, my my close friend, Kelly uh, Balch, who is, um, yeah, deep, deep in the lesbian community. Mm -hmm. She was like, hey, want to come hang out with the lesbian community? And I said, yes. A beach day with the lesbian community? <laughs> Lesbians, creators, it's it, a good time. It actually is a strong, like, her whole crew, like, it's a, it's a strong community. Very tight-knit. Like, everybody knows everybody. Right. That's yeah. what I've learned. Every lesbian in L.A. knows each other. I'm a little new to it. Like, I didn't start going out with all of them since, like, maybe February. So, like, I've known them a little bit longer, but... I don't know. Just going out, out. Yeah, is a, is a new thing for me. Did you uh, did you do any of the pride events? Oh yeah, That's it a was good time. it was fun. But I think I mentioned earlier it was like the weather was awful. It was like this doesn't feel very. This felt like homophobic. Like <laughs> the weather being that bad. <laughs> Yo. It's like there's no sunshine, there's no rainbows, yeah. it's raining on us right now. Yo, the weather is bigoted, dude. L.A. weather right now, homophobic. Exactly. But <laughs> you you know what we all know is the gays persevere. And we the gays party it. no matter what. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. fun. It was just like gloomy. Yeah, yeah where's the sun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all been feeling that here. Um, yeah, so the lesbian <laughs> community and the creator community. That is what I saw at your birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and there was like, I, I don't know, I could tell it's like good friends. Like everyone was like hanging in like an intimate way, which is nice to see because I don't always know what... Um, different friend groups are like like I choose my friends pretty carefully and like mm -hmm. there's a level of kind of openness silliness and intimacy that like I have with my friends but sometimes I go to other people's parties and I'm like oh nah. what was interesting it was it was multiple friend groups like meeting each other like a lot of people had just met that day like I had some family there too and like it was like worlds colliding for me but like they were all my close friends but like most of them didn't really know each other it yeah. wasn't like a friend group kind yeah of thing. Cool. Yeah. So you got to like merge all your worlds together. Mm -hmm. It meshed well. Thank you. And I was a part of it. You were. I, I crashed. <laughs> I crashed in there. Mind was blown. <laughs> I just turned around and I was like. <laughs> Had you watched Ned's grown up? Yeah, that was my favorite show growing up. Like I like actually took notes for when I went into middle school with it. Fire. Did they work? Did they help you? Did I help you? Middle school was rough. Gonna be just, yeah, but I think so. Why was it rough? It was just middle school. That's you remember true. It. Yeah, it's weird. It was just, you don't, I like almost failed sixth grade. Not because I wasn't like smart. It was just, I just didn't turn anything in ever. I just forgot. Yeah, that'll, um, that'll do it, right? That'll do it. <laughs> um, you know, if you don't turn in the work, like I did it, it and I just lived in my backpack. So middle I, school was a little weird. <laughs> I didn't think we had to give that tip on Ned's, but like if you do the work, we just thought it was implied. If you do the work, turn it in. Undiagnosed ADHD. Yeah. Makes sense now, like looking back, because like I wasn't lazy. I was just forgetful. So yeah. You you're given a pass. But now. I did watch a lot of Neds growing up. Fire. I can't even lie. Like it like a lot. Fire. <laughs> Honestly, your platform reminds me of like it's it's Ned like. Mm -hmm. Inspired a little bit. Just the educational wanting to like give it, tips and help people. Exactly. Like and there's like um yeah, it also has the silliness like of delivering kind of like real world uh, information and tips and, you know, connection. And like you just have like silliness to it yeah. and breaking the fourth wall. It's very Ned like actually. Ned's was very silly and just different from a lot of the other shows that were going on. Like it was yeah. helpful, but it was also like kind of out of pocket sometimes. For sure. Yeah. No, for sure. Fully out of pocket, like full insanity. But then also like full reality of helping people. That's like the magic I think that's carried with people mm -hmm. and watching it back. So I'm doing the Ned's podcast now, the rewatch pod. And like, it's my first time watching things back uh, <laughs> in 18 years. And first two episodes, I was like, why do people still love this? And then like, but that was just us working out the kinks. Mm -hmm. And then like three, four episodes in, I was like, oh, I get why yeah. this has lasted. It still makes me laugh. There's like a whole cult following with it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love it. I love that like there's like this chunk of generation that knows it, loves it, mm -hmm. is like, yo, you were my childhood. And anyone above it or below that generation, they're like, what? Ned's declassified school. Like the name's too long. They just, yeah. it, they glaze over. They missed it somehow. They missed it. It's fine. It's, it's going to be fine. Um, so I found out, like I've known about you for a while because of your platform, like the the videos i guess on like bite size like psychology tips yeah so like, this was years ago like 2019 yeah. is when i blew up from psychology stuff uh, i was still in college taking a general psych course and just regurgitating what i was learning from it and it blew up and then i ran out of stuff from class and then i had to do my own research and then it just kind of went off from there yeah, like people think I'm like a psychology expert. Right. In reality, I was like learning as I was going. Through. Right. And just like sharing it in mm -hmm. bite-sized content. Like I would try it out and be like, oh, this worked. I'm going to put it in a video. Yeah. But like, I mean, it related. It, I liked it. it like when I saw it, I was like, this was interesting. It definitely was like pseudo psychology though. It wasn't like deep diving in. It was just like how to mess with people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For a while it was just like, here's a prank. Yeah, it's true. Here's how to like katana someone's brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that's what works for bite-sized content anyways. You mm -hmm. can't give me like actual deep dive psychology research. It's not going to... Nobody's going to stick not gonna around. Translate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to have a platform. Um, where'd you go to college? Community college. Uh, college of the Sequoias up in the Valley in California. Cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. our, our mascot was either a tree or a giant. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> like the giant trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Sequoias. Yeah. That would make sense. <laughs> it didn't when I was there. I was like, I really don't know what our mascot is. Okay. But got to go for free. Yep. And that yeah. was it, yeah. You didn't start your adult life with like $100,000 of debt. Absolutely so good not. on you, dude. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you grow up? I originally grew up in Vegas, but then moved to California like right before high school. Okay. But like not the cool part of California. What part? Do you know where Fresno's at? I do know where Fresno's at. Fresno and at. Bakersfield. Yeah. Like in between. In between, in between Fresno, Fresno and, and Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Yeah. For, For those of you at home who don't know California, yikes. It's like the <laughs> Bible Belt of California. Yeah, and just like the flat, nothing. Cows There's and cows. corn and conservatives. It just, it's not, I left as soon as I could. Did you know you were gay? Then oh I knew I was gay for like my whole life okay <laughs> I like I, I I went through a phase where I tried to not be gay yeah but it didn't work <laughs> so you dabbled in boys and you said not nah. I yeah I mean like I came out when I was fourteen oh wow and it's kind of just been very very gay since <laughs> <laughs> yeah fire <laughs> good yeah. it's you you know <laughs> so you had to leave uh, Fresno Bakersfield yeah. Like I yeah. only went to school there because I got the free college, but as soon yeah. as I got the opportunity to come to LA, like yeah. I took it. Yeah. Do you like LA? It's a love hate relationship. Why? Well, like the weather is usually nice and the opportunities are cool. It's close enough to my family where I can visit, but like also not visit. Yeah. But like the traffic and like the environment, like people wise sometimes can be weird, but yeah. Overall, like, I don't see myself living anywhere else. Yeah. Also, it's expensive. Everything's it's expensive. very expensive. Like, too much. But so is any, like, city that's cool. Yeah. Because that's you know, why it's, it's expensive. Like the, it's the fee People to be People want to live there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You got to pay to be in the cool place. Yeah. You could go get a nice house in Bakersfield. <laughs> but then you'd be in Bakersfield. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the issue. I'll pay my expensive rent because exactly. I'm in L.A. Do you um, like L.A.? I do. I do. I've gone through I've gone through phases of, you know, maybe feeling a little whatever mm -hmm. about it. Um being here now as long as I have, like I'm full in. Like I know when people talk shit about it or things that people feel about it negatively, I'm like, yeah, I get that. But um the tra and the traffic is obviously like just like oh man. Sometimes I work from home though, so I don't have to deal with it too often. Exactly. It's whenever not like you I and do, I have I'm a like... regular commute. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, but I do. I love LA, man. And part of it is like what you were saying of like you knew you were moving here as soon as you could. Like that's the city. It's mm -hmm. like it's so diverse. 
everyone came here to to pursue some version of themselves or some dream or some creativity mm -hmm. uh, or just wanted to get close to the beach. Like all these things I just think created an incredible city and environment and like. You can do anything here. Like I grew up in Vegas. Yeah. So I was always used to something going on. If you wanted to go do something, you could go do something. And yes. then to go from that to the kind valley suburbs like the, yeah the bible belt of california that sucked and then coming back to la or coming to la just having that yes like opportunities again is really really nice yeah exactly you can go get out into nature if you want you can go to bars concerts museums like the beach whatever there's so much and that's what i love and i also do love as long as you're discerning about who you let into your inner circle mm -hmm. um because of course there's that element of LA where it's like everyone's trying to get somewhere. So there is that element of you're in a space and everyone's kind of like, well, who's that? And do they have value and do they not? And yeah. like- And that's really, really big and prevalent in like this TikTok social media space. For sure. Space. You get a lot of people where you're in a conversation and you can tell that they're kind of like looking around over, over you to find somebody better to talk to. Dude. But yeah. those are the people that you don't, like Like you said, like let into your inner circle. And that's yes. something I've kind of been learning how to do. I'm sure. Yeah. I had to learn it through my 20s. And like once I got good at it and once I started to really trust my feelings about people and being okay, like kind of being cold to some people or just like not giving people a lot, um, then everything's cool. Cause then I'm not bothered. Like I don't care that they're assessing in that way. Like, Cause I'm out getting what I want, which is like people I like to talk to and people I like to hang out with and like good feelings around me, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So once I got okay with that, I, I can kind of skirt by that stuff. But that is a part of LA that I don't think is in every city. That's one thing we got to deal with here is like the climbing the ladder of the industry. Cause it, 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 it's a place that accepts everybody, but everybody's like fighting for this like position that doesn't, I don't even, I don't know, like why are we competing so hard? Like I get why yeah. we're competing, but at the same time, like with social media, like why are we competing? Definitely with social media. Social yeah. media, I've found there's like no need for competition. Everyone gets to do whatever they want. And if you make it, you make it like mm -hmm. it. I don't feel like. But there's not a single role that you and your peers are fighting for. It's yes. like maybe eyes and watch time, but, but it's relative and it's weird. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you started in 2019 mm -hmm. and it's blown up. Yeah, like I, I don't know how long you've been watching, but I I worked at Best Buy while in college. Okay. And I started making TikTok videos like before school, before work, after work. I'd be in my Best Buy uniform, right? Fire. Somebody reported it to corporate, and corporate was like, "You need to take these videos down, or we're gonna fire you." And I was like, "Bet." Took the videos down, and then they still fired me. <laughs> and then I was in this weird space. So I was like, I could go get another job where I feel really replaceable. Or I can see what this TikTok thing's gonna do. I had like maybe 150, 200,000 followers at the time. Two weeks in, I had a million followers and then it was just a million every two weeks after that. It was insane. Like What? Getting fired from Best Buy was like the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> I had so much more free time to just do weird things on the internet. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You had a million in two weeks? Yeah. That's I'm just like, I had, like I said, like way more free time to really focus on like what I What you're to gonna do. post, yeah. Well, it worked. Dang. It's like, thank you, Best Buy. And now they have like, now they have people like posting videos of course. for the Best Buy page. Of I'm course. like, you guys could have used me. Of but they course. didn't understand but it, was too it early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand TikTok until like a year ago. You know, oh it's God. like, it's like people were late to it. Mm -hmm. And man, it's like the most powerful algorithm of them all. Oh, that was the biggest thing. Cause I was also in school for computer engineering. Well, So I was really trying to understand this like new weird algorithm. And I think I figured it out at one point, but it's changed so much since. Where do you want to go with it with social media yeah with with this plat with your platform with what you're creating i feel like if you asked me that when i started like here like i've made it compared to like then and yeah i'm still in this weird spot now you mean on ned bigby's podcast yeah this is exactly <laughs> where i wanted to be <laughs> you mean in an alley in hollywood <laughs> On Ned Bigby's podcast. This is the dream. Okay. <laughs> Fire. But also just the, like, I can support myself. Yeah. I don't feel as replaceable. Yes. I bought a house in LA recently. Damn. I transitioned from TikTok to YouTube. I have that gold plaque now hanging up on my wall. Like, yeah. This is the dream that I had just a couple years ago. And now I'm here and I'm like, 
well, now what do I want to do that I'm like, I've made it. I've made it. Yeah, like, you've made it to that point. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I, I'm You're trying allowed. to do like stand up or like voice acting just to have something a little bit more real. But I think social media is always going to be like a part of what I do. For sure. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. Like what beyond if you have aspirations beyond it, you know, because now with a platform, yeah, you can use it to I've, do I've, other things. Like social media, I feel like is opened all these doors yeah i just got to find the door that i want to go through exactly. so i'm trying a bunch of different things but that's i don't know exactly yet it's perfect like it's perfect uh at your age too it, like you're in your 20s right 24, 24? Mm -hmm. yeah perfect he remembers let's go yeah i was there you know i was there i should remember <laughs> i literally sang happy birthday um uh but no that's perfect dude like your 20s that's the time the time to not know specifically but like explore mm -hmm. and be asking yourself the question constantly because different answers will come mm -hmm. you'll try things and either it'll feel good and maybe progress or it won't or whatever you know yeah that's N kind of the spot that i'm in I'm yeah dabbling yeah that's that's dope yeah that's the time now that i'm in my 30s i feel like feel like whatever i do um it's got a it's got to fucking work. <laughs> it's like no more room for mistakes now, right? Like it feels a little <laughs> like that. Like interesting. Yeah, like I did enough of like, oh, let me try that, and it really not going well. And let me try that, and it kind of working, but not going. Like I did enough dabbling that yeah, just I don't know. This decade feels different. Uh, do you watch like Gary V at all? I do watch Gary V. He would yell at you, being like, "You're only thirty. You're young. You're fine. Keep making mistakes. You got all the time in the world." Like you're right. Yeah, he would, <laughs> and. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. No, I think his message is right uh, to everyone, mm -hmm. right? Like people who have never started anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start. Start at 35. Start at 40. Change your life at 50. Just do like, something. Do it. Great. I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I've been living that life. I need it to fucking work, Yeah, Bella. you got a little bit more higher standards than just the average person that he's talking to on his channel. Kind exactly. Of I feel like that. his message is right. Um, I've just been chasing, I, like I've already been doing that for mm -hmm. too long that now I need it to fucking work. <laughs> also, all you guys know how to turn your TikTok accounts into like full livings. I've got a million followers. I, I don't make any money on TikTok. Oh God. I don't know. TikTok throws pennies at us. They don't pay well that's, they've never done it ever that's what i'm saying i but I, you bought a house somehow so youtube okay okay <laughs> youtube's is so much better like, i had a youtube for a minute too it never <laughs> like tiktok when you said you started you figured it out like a year ago like when did you start tiktok yeah i guess it, i guess it was two now it was 2021 okay i started it i feel like if i would have started in 2021 it would have been like way more of an uphill battle like, yeah when I started, it was embarrassing to have the app. Like I hid it on my phone. I didn't want anybody to know <laughs> that I was on this app, but I did because I wanted it below. It was a weird little transition thing, but like I saw that it was like getting bigger and I was like, if I just keep posting, I'll get bigger with the app. And then once it was already bigger, I was like looking at people starting. I was like, that's a, that's a tough little thing yeah. you're doing. But with like TikTok versus YouTube, like yeah, the YouTube money. Yeah, business wise. I, yeah. I got a video that got a hundred million views on TikTok, and I think they paid me like nine hundred bucks. Yeah, nine hundred dollars is cool, right? But for a yeah. hundred million, million views, views that is a same ton. video on YouTube, I think it got like forty million views. Yeah, I made like six k. <laughs> yeah, like that's actual money. TikTok doesn't like pay. It doesn't. It's it's not. It's very fragile and it's not sustainable. Right. Even but though I, I love it, but I love I, it. But I still hear all these stories of people who are like, yeah, you know, my videos took off and I quit my job and I bought a house. And I'm like, what am I doing here, dude? But we're figuring it out with, uh, you know, growing up in my Ned's pod. This is the and, coolest podcast setup I've ever seen. Hey, I hope you know, like this. Thanks. I love this. Thanks. You Just, like our growing up Hollywood sign? Yeah. Like I, I was mentioning earlier, like I had a podcast with Netflix for a while, which is like, ooh, fancy. Yeah. I did it in my bedroom. Like I just had a little microphone. I put like a sheet over the window so you couldn't hear the cars going by. <laughs> like this is really cool. Yeah. This is an actual studio. Yeah. You know, but it's not ours. It's like other people rent it too, you know? Um, yeah. Do you, do you, you did a podcast? Did a podcast. Did you like, like it? Oh, yeah. You I, didn't. I, it, I found it hard to read off a script and enjoy reading off the script. Over it was over a scripted over. podcast? Yeah. So Netflix wanted me to promote their shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we would pick a show like The Umbrella Academy. Yeah. And then pick a topic in it 
like time travel and then just dive deep into time travel. Okay. But it would have to be like a researched kind of thing and like I would read off a little script in my room and it wasn't like a conversation kind of thing. It was Got more just talking at people. Yeah. I guess I guess that's cool. Like I would listen to you talking to me about time travel, but yeah, I guess it's not the same as like It was cool. Like I, I enjoyed it. Um but people were like, You wanna get back into podcasting? I was like, No. No, no I don't. <laughs> Um, did I see you went to a, did you go to EDC? Did you go to a rave recently? I did go to EDC. I'm on, it's festival season. I've been going to all the festivals lately. Have you, have you been a festival kid or this is new? I used to go, do you know what Aftershock is? No. It's like Coachella, but for rock music. So oh. like Metallica and like Papa Roach, all like the, the heavy, like rock metal bands. I okay. used to go to those all the time. And That's different. It is different. It's a different vibration than It's a lot of EDC. like circle pits and dust and the pushing. And Which is... Everybody wearing black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> EDC was wild. It's completely yeah. different. Not my kind of music, but I <laughs> loved the vibe. Okay. Like, it was so much fun. I also went to Coachella a couple of times. Cool. This year was really fun, but EDC was like out of this world. Yeah, I still have yet to go to EDC, but it is it EDC. is my vibe. Like, I've been to Coachella a We're million gonna times. We're going to go next year. You gotta I'll come. Get, it, it was insane. I cried multiple times. Every time the fireworks came, I was like sobbing. Just out like, of the beauty of life? Yeah. I was like, what is happening? What is this life that I'm living? It was weird. It, no, but it's very, wonderful. Very, I recommend EDC. I I know. It's like, <laughs> listen, I'm old uh, compared. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've not done EDC, but I have had those experiences. That's why it's like beyond if it's your music or not, the vibe, the energy at a rave mm -hmm. at even Coachella, that is different from a rock festival, even though there is, I love rock and like, even though there's community there, it's different. The vibration's different when everyone's there to like literally have like the most loving, colorful, best experience of their life. Yeah, the vibe was definitely more like, like loving, like you said, yeah. versus like Aftershock is just like, we're Aggro. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna get all our aggression out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And then Coachella is just, outfits like i don't know everybody just like wants to take pictures and do outfits and like not actually get up and push towards the front of the crowd i guess but yeah i, I saw your coachella post it might have been a different experience for you versus... i was there in a different era yeah it was i hate to say it but it was cooler I, it sounds cooler <laughs> like i went like seven years and i have like four photos it was pre-iphone i think and even when we had iphones like they weren't taking great photos like it blows my mind like i went to so much Coachella and literally I have four photos and now everyone has literally thousands from one too day. Too many. Yeah, Way too, too many. many pictures from Coachella. Yeah, I, I really got to go during like a golden time. I started going when I was like 17, went to my first like three day Coachella uh, in 2008 and it was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And then I went like every year, I was like, I'm never missing this experience, <laughs> this feeling. Just being around like 80,000 people all wanting to have the best time, like not seeing any fights or aggression, just everyone literally like. It makes me love humans for just a little bit. I'm like, yes. we're so weird and silly. We just get attracted to lights and music. Yes. And we just bounce around to it. Like, what are we, what are we doing? Yes, <laughs> yes. It's like the best, yes. That's why I love festivals. It, it, it reminds me like, oh, we're so silly and fun. Yeah. Like, and we can do it. Like, oh, and like we can all get together and like have a good time. Mm -hmm. I love it. Brings I, me joy. I will say though, as much as I love Coachella, probably gonna go next year too. EDC is so much like, like the setup, like how they, I don't know, move people around is better. Cool. Especially if you get like the VIP, like artist area. Yeah. It's better. I'm coming with you next year. Bet. Okay. <laughs> it's so fun. Also saw your fits and I'm getting some of those too. Oh man, I posted those and lost so many followers. Really? You're not even, you're gonna be like, very, I don't want to tell you. It's embarrassing. Like, I lost so many followers from the EDC Fit Picks. What? I'm so confused. Why? Mm -mm. <laughs> Why? It was just you, I like, have vibing. So, I have so many theories. I, like, wore pasties, and I think people thought I was a dude, and they're like, what? <laughs> and then I, like, showed my girlfriend. They're like, oh, my God, they're gay. I'm like, Wait, I don't know. What? I, I lost, like, like 100,000 followers in that weekend. Honestly, awesome. <laughs> When people leave like that, like, great. It's like you weren't actually Go. a fan. So yes. Like, I'm not, I was, it was more shocking than like upsetting. That is like, shocking though. A hundred thousand? Yeah. So I, I saw the post. They were all like, right? great. Thank it was you. just you vibing and. People don't like that. They want the fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fun facts? You're not allowed to have a girlfriend. 
what's your gender? Do you like, <laughs> like, a lot of that. It's like, I, did, I thought you were a girl. I thought you were a boy. What's going on? Did people not know you were gay? Mm-hmm. Didn't, I, you have, okay. didn't you like post all about like, uh, yeah. did you have a relationship on the I've, internet? I've been previous? out since I was 14. <laughs> yeah. My previous relationship, uh, I called them my boyfriend just because of like pronouns and all that. Okay. Uh, so I think that confused people a little okay. bit. But okay. But I've been gay. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Internet's weird. Internet's very weird. We can't take that stuff too seriously. Like if you're posting stuff that feels good and like your girlfriend and like your great time at EDC and people unfollow, it's like cool. Yeah. Like I had the best time. Yeah. So I'm not worried about the number. And, yeah. But it was just like, what did I do? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Internet's strange. Got to watch out. Who knew? Who knew rave fits were gonna right? like, bring if down I go your platform? Again, do I post my outfit? Do you I do. just avoid it? You do. I do. Because okay. they were We'll find the audience vibing. that wants those. Exactly. You'll yeah. you'll get the rave babies. Oh gosh. The gay rave babies. Mm-hmm. We gotta find if we need we need that audience to come find me. That also like fun facts, because I do still post those. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I see. You're you, you can you can be multifaceted. Actually, the internet doesn't like that. The internet doesn't. They they follow you for a specific thing, and they just want that thing. That's that's one thing that I've had a difficult time, or not a difficult time. It's one thing I just know about myself with my platforms is like I, I'm all over the place, mm-hmm. and I'm not really going to change that. So I kind of know there's like a limit to how much my stuff is going to grow, because I know, especially for TikTok, the model is like do one thing. Get find a niche and do and it. Stick to it. Yeah, I had Sydney Raz on here. Um, you know, oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, love Sydney, and it was so great talking to him. I mean, he was pursuing YouTube for like ten years, and finally TikTok came along, and like he found the thing and was able to make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, and then shorts too. I remember we were talking about shorts for a while, and like how he should post that stuff because we're we do very similar content. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, yeah. He it does is. like the life hack stuff. Yeah. I do like a portion of my stuff is life hacks, but he does it way better. He, he his is just I mean it's just so dialed. Um, yours is like I mean even like psychological life acts. His are, his are like these very literal, mm-hmm. you know. Like use like useful. yeah. Did you know a very hammer practical. can do this? I'm like what? <laughs> he had one video where he like didn't know that the sun visor extended, and that one got me. I don't know if you've seen it, but he was just like, did you know? And everybody was like, yeah, it yeah, extends. I, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> that. But he gets so mind blown by some things. It's really funny. What we're saying is he's also dumb. He's not dumb. You heard us, Sydney. Oh, God. You dumb. <laughs> uh, he's got a show with my Anami producers called Are You Kidding Me on YouTube now, where he oh, cool. goes and like finds weird jobs and learns about like, are you kidding me? You can live this way? You can, your lifestyle can be like this? You can raise puppies? I don't know. That sounds cool. It's great. It's what's it called again? Are You Kidding Me? I'm going to check that out. Yeah. You know, and it's him being uh, him, which... He's a great, he's a great like dude and host. And even if he's being dumb, we love watching him have his mind blown. I know? do. I thought that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but he found that thing and then did that thing over and over and over again. And it works so well. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm too, uh, maybe ADHD. I'm like, oh, I want to post my cat today. And then I'll do some Ned content and then I'll do some growing up content. And now I'll just use a filter and make myself laugh. And I think that is healthier and like just better in sense in the sense of like you're posting what you want, what makes you happy versus like I can't post psychology stuff every day and like be happy with what I do. You know, like I am so much more okay with posting all over the place with what I'm interested in and not growing as much. Yeah. Versus like I need to get the follower number. I need to hit this number. Yeah. yeah, so that's where I'm at. Yeah, how is your balance with that? I have found it to be difficult at times when I'm really wanting to grow my platform and kind of putting that pressure and that expectation and that fear on it. Um, it has not been good for my mental health, but but the platform itself growing is good for what I want, what mm-hmm. I'm building. It's fun at times. Um, so just striking that balance, I always kind of have to check in with myself of like, am I too involved with this algorithm and these numbers that are so abstract from what matters in my life. Um, How's your balance? I have found a balance very, very recently. Okay. But for the majority of my TikTok career and social media stuff, it's affected me heavily. Like if a video didn't perform to a certain standard that I set to myself, it ruined my whole day. (sighs) Try again tomorrow. I'm like, I, I always just wanted to find something to go viral. 
Yep. And it's always the videos that you least expect yep. that do versus the thing that you put a lot of effort into. And once I kind of just came to terms with that, I stopped caring about the numbers as much just because like my mental health got really, really bad. Yeah. So just, I, I still care, but it doesn't, I don't let it like, affect me how it used to. Yeah. Well, people don't know if you've never gone viral. It's addicting. Dude, the chemicals <laughs> that get released in your brain when something is going viral is crazy. Mm -hmm. My producers, I think, got to experience it. Well, Rami's got her platform that does very well, but I know they saw it when like, we had like a growing up clip go like two million on TikTok and like, it's cr your brain just like lights up. It's I don't, like, oh. I don't even know how to describe it, but yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about because I went through it for like so two many years times, straight. Yeah. But then I know what you're saying when it doesn't hit, mm -hmm. then you're like, even if it's just for a day, like I was like, I'm falling off, my career's over, everything's gone, nobody, <laughs> nobody likes me. But then the next day it'd be fine. And like now I look back at the videos that I thought did bad. I'm like, if I can get that number now, <laughs> I'd be so happy. <laughs> it's so it's really all it's honestly mental and just like not having expectations for it is probably the best thing that you could do. And yeah. Just post what you're proud of. Yeah. What what do you do to support your mental health? I go to therapy, but I've been in therapy for a while. Uh, I got dogs, but I don't know if they, they help as much as I thought they were going to. <laughs> 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 and I try to get out of the house like because I really do work from home. I'm either working from my phone, I'm on my computer, I'm like just always on a screen. I try to get out of the house or else I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. The pandemic in particular... Like I never spent more time at home, which I like my home mm -hmm. and I like my routines, but not when it's the only thing in the world that I'm not going out. And yeah, like, I mean, that that brought my mind to the brink of like insanity. I'm, I'm very much an introvert. And anytime I go out, I do need time to recharge. Yes. And I got a lot of time to recharge. <laughs> yeah. so like it was like. I was fine staying inside, but it was like in the back of my head, I was like, oh, is this healthy? I need, I think I need to leave. But yeah. yeah, I also don't read comments as much anymore. Like mm. I'll put up a video, I'll maybe read for like the first hour and then I just, I have to turn it off because I don't want the negative stuff, but I also don't want the positive stuff. Talk it, about that. Why? The negative stuff makes me sad. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like the positive stuff can make me a little bit manic. And so if I just ignore all of it, I can be my normal neutral self. That's awesome, dude. I have to ignore both. That's awesome. Um, so uh, I was in the I was in the MTV building in Santa Monica when I had booked Ned's before it had aired. And I was there like meeting with some of the studio people. I was 12 years old, I think. And Henry Winkler, do you know who that is? I'm so bad with names. Oh, so maybe, no, but you're also not. too young. He's like an old famous actor. He was the Fonz in Happy Days, which is okay. an ancient show. I know, you're uh, but about he was that. on Barry. He, he's a he's a long time like OG actor, right? And he was in there having a meeting, and we overlapped. And I was 12 years old, and he he was very generous with me and was like, "Hey, you know, oh, you got a new show, you know, that's great. If I can give you um, any advice, it's." Um, it's don't believe the good you read about yourself and don't believe the bad. Mm -hmm. And like, it's taken me many, many years to fully understand what he was saying there. And it's that, yeah. it's that thing you're saying is like, people think, oh, the negative comments are what will break your mind down. But it's also if you're believing all the positive and love you're getting from these strangers who mm -hmm. don't actually know you. Yeah, I've also, I think what helped me a lot was knowing like Jaius is more of a character online. Mm. And so if people like Jaius, they like the character. If they hate Jaius, they hate the character. They don't actually like know me. They don't know Bella. And that was a good separation to have in my mind that yeah. I know a lot of other creators don't do because they're just them, themselves. themselves but yeah. Jaius is very much a character. Wow. Versus like who I am in real. Like people meet me and they're like, you're kind of different. I'm like, yeah. I'm not screaming fun facts in your face. I was just gonna, <laughs> I was just gonna say, it's like, oh, you're like quieter and like, listening and not like <laughs> yelling facts at me. People are very shocked. I don't just scream all the time. I'll, <laughs> Hi! I'll, I went to Pride and like I had multiple people that like recognized me and be like, give me a fun fact. I'm like, I didn't come prepared, but I was like, ah, like baby koala bears eat their mother's shit and that's why they all have chlamydia. And they're like, 
Like you asked, you asked for a funny fact. <laughs> like not that one, <laughs> not that one. Yeah. So uh, this is another thing. Like meeting people. How are you with like that? Like in, like getting recognized. Yeah. So luckily, I feel like it's probably similar for you. But l- luckily, Ned's, which is what everyone knows me from is like in people's hearts and souls. So it's just love. All mm-hmm. I get is love. It's like, oh my, oh, are you, I love, you were my childhood. Like all I get is like positivity. So I'm pretty good with that, you know? That's cool. Um, and it's usually just like, oh my God, I love you. You were my childhood. Can we take a photo? And it's like, yeah, great. And let's take a photo and then I'm out, you know? So I'm pretty, pretty good with it. Those are like really good reactions. That's good. I've yeah. had a couple weird ones, but the majority have just been like, you're on TikTok. I love your videos. Oh my God. But yeah. my favorite interactions are the ones where like, I can see somebody like looking at me a little bit too long. So I look at them and they look at me and I'm like, you know, and they're like, I know. And I'm like, and then we just separate and there's no interaction <laughs> at all. But like, we know that we know. Those are my favorites. Yeah. 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 Those are tight. Actually, I've had a few of those too, where it's like, <laughs> like we make eye contact and it's just like a little nod <laughs> and then they're like, oh, but they never come up. Yeah. It's great. Or a love lot of that. like the that one too. Yep, that one too. Yep, I had uh, I had that yesterday in in Sweet Green. <laughs> Met a nice nice girl who had like she, I, I was pulled up on her phone. I saw <laughs> she was like, "Excuse me, are you Devin Morgaiser?" And I'm looking down at her phone, which has me. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's me. That's I'm fun. right there. Um, yeah. Yeah, since the podcasts have been out, uh, it's happened more because like people see what I look like Your grown up now. Face, yeah. My grown up face, even though it's this is very similar to my Ned. It is, face, right? but also like people can get confused with how much time they're like, you know. But exactly. I cut my hair and I didn't get recognized for a couple of weeks. It was it was interesting. And you hated it, so you grew it back out. <laughs> this is this is short. Oh, you remember my long hair? I don't know if you remember. Oh, I guess yeah, from like, the original videos. Yeah. yeah. So I cut it and like I went a couple of weeks where I went out and like I was like. I haven't gotten stopped in a minute, <laughs> but then it caught back up. Yeah. You start making stuff with this and you're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we batch, uh, my Ned's pod so far in advance that like, I'm going to have this huge beard that I had <laughs> and this long hair on that for like months. That's awesome. <laughs> so people are still going to think I'm that, which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a strange part of like pursuing this life is like then being a public person. And people can get weird in terms of like when they consume your content, some people don't understand that like you're a person separate. Even though my content is my name, I don't have a JS. It's my name, it's me, and it's me authentically. It's still me putting stuff on social media. Like that's not me as a full Mm -hmm. being. And when people like consume all that media, sometimes people can get a little like, they don't understand boundaries. They develop a parasocial relationship where they, like to you or to them, like they're, you're their friend, but you don't know them at all. Exactly. And that happens a lot. But exactly. I honestly, like I like meeting people just cause it's, it, for me, it helps put the the number. Like it's like, oh, you're one yeah, of them. You're, a person. You're, you're the number, you're that number. Yeah. But, have gotten some weird interactions yeah but i i usually like whenever it happens i have like people around that like like friends that can help yeah <laughs> but yeah it doesn't happen too often most people are very normal yes yes <laughs> exactly and i'm surprised by that and i'm so grateful mm-hmm. most people are real good um yeah it's it's very rare and i yo i got lucky with um I got lucky with the weird level of fame that Ned's was because I was like anonymous enough, like as a teenager, that like mm. I could still like live. But there were, <laughs> there were definitely a couple times at like music festivals. And I was grateful because it was only, it was like very small interactions. It wasn't like I was like being looked at the whole time. But mm. uh, yeah, there were definitely a couple times at music festivals where maybe I'm coming up on on something. Maybe I'm coming up on a little something. Okay, listeners, maybe I ate some mushrooms, okay? Maybe. And then, <laughs> and then I'm waiting for a band to start and someone turns and they're like, oh my God, are you Ned? And I'm like, not now. Thank you. Love you. 
I'll see you in six hours. <laughs> I can't do this right now. I went to Aftershock last year. Yeah. And I was getting stopped like maybe every like 15 steps. Oh, it was just like, damn. See, that's too much. Can I get a picture with you? How can I? I, it was like enjoyable. But yeah. the second day, I might have consumed something. I might have taken a little thing. Oh, and you so, might have taken something too, huh? I don't know what I took, but something. <laughs> uh, and I was watching a band and it felt like everybody in the crowd was looking at me. But you know, you're like, oh, it's anxiety. Nobody's looking at you. Yeah. But people were still coming up to me in the middle of the show. So I knew somebody was, but I'd look at them and they weren't. And I'd look back and you could see their head turned back. And I'm like, look, it was weird. It yeah. was like, I couldn't calm myself down and be like, nobody's looking at you. Yeah. People were, but then whatever I took made it feel like everybody was looking at me. So I don't do those things at festivals anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Because look, when you take things, that's something, someone who has no platform and no one knows who they are, like that's something you might feel. You get, you can get hyper self-aware if yeah. you take a psychedelic or something like that, especially in a crowd of people, you can feel very self-aware, which is not what you want to feel. Mm -mm. Um, and when you actually have people who <laughs> might be looking at you, mm -mm, mm -mm, can't do that. Mm -mm. Learn that lesson the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So only in the VIP area, right? <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Still, like, you, like, meet people. And you, I just don't like being on that level sometimes when I need to have a conversation. It's I more agree. for when I want to be in the comfort of my own home. I agree. Much yeah. better time. Yeah. I want to be around <laughs> friends or be somewhere where I'm, like, semi-anonymous. Like, mm -hmm. I can't be – I can't be being, like, my, like, nice, like, public self, yeah. you know? Because totally I want to, like, be a frog and, like, you know <laughs> – Roll around on the ground and, you know, make weird noises and stuff. We have very different experiences. With okay. <laughs> okay got it. You want to be a frog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've never. Uh... I've had like lizard moments, but. See, we're, get, we're in the same. We're in the same realm there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Things happen, man. Shit gets weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm very I... excited for EDC now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to see frog me. Oh, man. I don't know. Would I take drugs at EDC? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I'm going to put on a crazy fit, though. So um, maybe a mask. Everybody does. That's yeah. the best part. I'm going to paint my body. People watching at EDC is so fun. I believe that. I watched like this dude in a blow-up Pikachu outfit just headbanging for like 10 minutes. I, was just <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to anything else. I was just like, he's getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, love, you don't love electronic music? I like it. But it's not like I'm not gonna like put it on my phone and like vibe to it in the car. You're gonna vibe thing. to Metallica. Yeah. Wow. But also maybe not Metallica specifically. Okay. I got I went to Bottle Rock, which is another festival. Yeah, that's a that's a last dope one. Year, yeah. I got punched at Metallica. It was a whole thing. Um, so I don't like listening to their stuff specifically anymore. It just okay. like brings up. I'm like, but you know. Okay, you feel like you're getting punched. <laughs> I just, it's it's bad vibes. Uh, yeah, okay. But other, other metal is fine. All right. I was listening. I've, I've, I've actually been uh, going back to my metal days uh, recently. I was listening to Under Oath on the way here. Do you know Under Oath? Mm -mm. But I'll check it out on the way back. It's emoji. I think they're Christian, to be honest. Which a I, Christian I, metal band? There's a lot of them. Like, I didn't know this, but I think they're Christian. Sometimes their lyrics pop through and I'm like... Are they screaming about Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> but I just like their their breakdowns and their screaming. It's it's good times. Sorry. It was from my it was from my emo days in oh, my emo days. in my teenage years. Okay. Before I might have taken some things and then wanted vibe your music. I feel like those things actually pulled me out of my emo phase. Exactly. Like I was very emo. Exactly. And then I did like mushrooms once and I was like, life is so precious. Exactly. Why am I sad all the time? Dude, like, exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like, why am I listening to this screaming sad stuff? Mm -hmm. Let me put on some vibes. But some of the EDM, like I've learned that there's different kinds of EDM now. Many genres. Before, like it was just like. Yeah. Everything was. But now I can tell like the scary stuff from like the more uplifting. and yeah. like. Oh, there's I whole subgenres. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you'd be in a dubstep. Oh my God. I was so into Skrillex in high school. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's kind of, it's kind of metally mm -hmm. and you can like headbang. They're to screaming it. a little bit in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Saw Marshmallow at EDC. I like saw him and then I like saw him. He like looked at me in his mask and I was like, how can you tell? What do you mean? How could I tell? He was wearing the, you can't see his eyes. He like the little X is like we were in his way. So okay, then we okay. moved out of his way. Okay. And he was like, okay. my girlfriend freaked out way more than I did. But I was just like, it's marshmallow. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> um, cool. What? Um, 
how do you measure success now? You have a big platform. It's gone well. Mm -hmm. um, how do you define success for yourself? Success for me, there's probably a couple different like areas of success, but my biggest goal is to just be able to take care of like my siblings. So, so far I'm helping them and that, that that's like, I'm successful right now. I'm helping them. If I can maintain Dude. helping all my siblings, I'll, I'll be successful in life. That's amazing. How many siblings? 11. <laughs> what did you just say to me? <laughs> I have 11 siblings. Nine are younger. So I'm the oldest girl and the rest. Did I do the math right? Yeah. I'm processing. You can take it back. <laughs> 11? That's a, that's a large, that's a lot of siblings. Catholics don't believe in birth control. I know. <laughs> I know. I was raised Catholic. Luckily, How I just have one you, sister. You just have, interesting. I had some, you know, I had uh, modern Catholics, mm -hmm. you know, they, uh, they believed in contraception. I had like Roman Catholic parents. We went to church and I didn't even understand what anybody was saying. Was oh, like, they were in Latin? It was in Latin. Oh my goodness. So I didn't know what was going on, but I also just, yeah, 11 siblings. My dad was raised, he had eight siblings. So Dang. Just, yeah. And you're the second oldest, so you feel responsible. Just a little bit. What's the biggest gap? Like what's the age, what's the youngest? Uh, my oldest brother is like, I wanna say like 32. Okay. The youngest just turned five. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. All right. Well, I like your measure of success. That's beautiful. Yeah, so Helping the, a lot your family. of them are like eight. Like I have a couple that are adults now, but like one wants to come live with me. I want to support her here. I have another one that like is about to graduate high school. I want her to come live with me too. And if I can just like keep my house and they can live with me, cool. solid. If I can keep doing that. I love that. That's, that's beautiful, man. Um, I only have one sister, but I love her dearly. I'm like... As I grow in life, it's like, man, my my family relations, like, it's special, you mm -hmm. know? They have older the or most, younger sister? She's older. She's two years older. Okay. She lives in Australia. Ooh. It's incredibly far. It's too it's, far. I'm, I don't even know how far it is, but I can imagine it's the other side. It's, yeah, it's like 8,000 miles away. Do you visit away. at all? Yeah, I do. Or does she visit you? Both, except the pandemic happened yeah. and Australia locked down their entire island and I didn't see her for three years. That's wild. Could you imagine not seeing your siblings for three years? Like, yeah. woof. I was in a foster care when I was 16 and I didn't get to see them again until I was 19. Oh. So I did go about three years without seeing my siblings. It's rough. It's rough. Mm -hmm. It's rough. Like, it's part of my life. Like, I never thought it would be that long. Mm -hmm. Dang. Yeah. So once you got reconnected with them, you're like... I love you. I'm helping you. Oh, for sure. We're doing this. They were very upset with me for a while because they just saw it as me leaving versus like I needed to like get out. Yeah. But I think now that they're getting older, they kind of understand a little bit like why that happened. Yeah. And yeah. Why was it? I was gay. My parents are Catholic. I was going to ask. Yeah. So when I came out, they tried to do like conversion therapy. Oh, man. And it didn't work. And I got caught with a girlfriend and... Shit just went bad. But yeah. I have I have a good relationship with my parents now. So like we worked through it. But foster care was necessary. That's why I got to go to college for free. Wow. And yeah. So it was also like one of those weird things where like a door closed, but like many others opened. Dude. And time passed and you were able to reconnect with your parents and your siblings and mm -hmm. and they're all right yeah. with you now. So all right. Yeah, good. I'm the cool older famous sister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Man, that's so tough with uh, the, the religious folks and how they treat their children. Mm -hmm. Stuff breaks my heart. Like Kelly had a, she's great with her family now, but yeah, it was a similar thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like. Ugh. A lot of like the, my friends, especially like gay community, have the kind of like same story. It's like right. me and my parents didn't get along for years, but like we're cool now. Right. But I think it's more of just the, like I, only started talking to my parents again so I could talk to my siblings. And yeah. then it kind of worked out from there. But yeah. they're not religious anymore, at least not in the same way. Hmm. So yeah, I can Great. be gay and they're not like judging me anymore. <laughs> Great. Uh, do you have any advice for any listeners out there who uh, maybe struggle with uh, their sexual identity and like family? I kind of give the same advice anytime anybody asks me, like, how do I come out to my parents? I don't think they're going to respond very well. I say don't. I say wait until you can support yourself because 
foster care worked out for me. It helped me. But I know so many of the people that it sent them down like a different kind of path. And it's yeah. not going to be the same for everybody. Yeah. I wouldn't wish foster care on anybody. So if you can keep it a secret just a little bit longer, slay. But if you can't, I would find somebody in your family who is might might be more accepting to help you come out to your parents than might not. Or like one parent or versus the other, like have an adult there with you to help. Because mm. just, I don't, know, I don't ever want to be like, just come out, be yourself and like put some kid in danger kind of thing. So I love that. Find somebody that can be supportive to help tell your parents with you. I love that. Thanks for that. Yeah. Some, some advice is to blanket. Uh, hopeful optimistic and it's yeah. just not r real it's like just be yourself tell everyone it's like i think like, once you're able to support yourself be yourself right what do we need to do right. but if you're not able to take care of yourself like foster care is a very scary like option that, yeah yeah no did you come out to your whole family i can i actually got caught talking to a girl yeah. and so i was kind of outed i didn't get the whole like i'm gay experience it was yeah. like you're gay <laughs> i'm bi to so lighten God. the load yeah. which didn't work <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were like oh if you're bi you can learn how to be straight we're yeah. gonna put you in classes to make you straight and so oh. i just made a big mistake trying to like hedge yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. what do they teach in conversion class <laughs> it was a lot of like <laughs> you're gonna make jesus sad if you don't Aww. kiss a boy instead like I hate this you're a demon like you have demons like that kind of Ugh. it was crazy talk especially for somebody who at the age just didn't believe in god at all yeah I was like, you're like what are you talking about yeah <laughs> have you seen women they're gorgeous exactly it's like why are you gay why would why would i be straight <laughs> why are you straight i don't care <laughs> I ask you the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, yeah, it wasn't a choice, but they made it feel like it was. And then I yeah. went through a weird period. Was like, maybe I am straight. And I dated a guy for like a month, and it was not, <laughs> mm -mm. not for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 not, not for me. Mm -mm. Um, man, love that. I, it's. I, I'm glad we're moving in a. It feels like society, hopefully, is moving in a good direction. I think we're moving in a good direction. I yeah. feel like because of how good the direction is going, there is like resistance. Backlash. Yep. But I think we're gonna get through it. Exactly. Yeah. It feels more fringe to be homophobic now rather oh, yeah. than mainstream. It's like, which just is get like, on the right God. side of history. Just, just do it. Also, stop caring about what other people are doing. That, that. If it yeah, doesn't affect you, why does it doesn't matter at all? Mm -mm. And also, have you hung out with the gays? They're so fun. It's so fun. I love going to gay bars versus like a straight so bar. Fun. I'll go to both, but like the gay bar just is, oh, feels safe. It's a good time. <laughs> we have good times. Not we as in I'm gay, but. You're in the community. That's how we met. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm we, us lesbians. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm honorary. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. And honestly, I've had enough haircuts in my life where people are like, are you a lesbian? I was like, damn. I could be. I could be. <laughs> you know, I had the Bieber swoop. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, is that a little boy or a little lesbian? Who's to say? Nobody. I'm not here to judge. Exactly. Even myself. I get the same thing. People yeah. are like, are you, is that a little boy? <laughs> I get sir all the time. Really? I went to the passport office like recently to get like apply it. And like one of the people were like, sir, can you move? Um, Sir, can you move? <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> then that same lady had to look at my birth certificate and was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, honestly, I don't care. Yeah. You're fine. You didn't make a mistake. I just didn't. I wasn't responding. Yeah, I just, to sir. I just didn't understand who was talking to me. Yeah. Hilarious. I get, um, it's not in real life, but on the phone, it's not in person. On the phone, for some reason, this voice, I get ma'am. What? For everything. That's wild. I know, right? I don't think. I don't think. I don't either. think I sat. But also, like, you should call me once. And I'll just. I'll like, maybe. Like, that's try weird. And, Wait, no. Try and listen. Yeah, yeah. Close your eyes. Okay. And now I'm like, yeah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I you just put on heard, like a telephone dude, voice. Like I just heard is. that. I go up in. My <laughs> Hold on, we're learning. All right, close your eyes. Okay. And I'm calling like, yeah. Oh my god, it does go up. I go like. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Can I? Oh, I can't stop it. You're having a realization. I, now. I'm literally having an epiphany. You're like, that why like, does everybody think when I'm I order woman? pizza, I go Hello? up like an octave? <laughs> hi, yeah. Can I get a pizza? Can I get a pepperoni pizza? I do go up. I get really head Maybe voice. A little bit. 
I've learned things today, <laughs> Bella. Thanks for that. I got uh, you. I'm gonna start ordering pizza. Like, hi. <laughs> hey, can I? Um, I mean, place if it bothers you, then maybe. But if you <laughs> if you don't care, yeah, I, I actually don't care. It it just makes me laugh how uniform it happens, and it's always at the end of the call usually. So mm. it's it's before I have a chance to. They're <laughs> like, all right, thank you, ma'am, and and then I'm just left with this moment of like. Am I? <laughs> what am I? That whole time they were perceiving me in a different way. Exactly. Was, that would throw me off. I yeah. mean, it does sometimes, but also I think it's funny. I think it, it's funny to confuse people a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> That's just a little mischief. And honestly, I don't give a fuck. The, the only things we get defensive about in our lives are things we're like, we're unsettled in in ourselves, like, you know? Like if struggling you, with. Yeah, if you're getting defensive at someone who doesn't know you, mm -hmm. like, you're struggling with it. Yeah, like if somebody's like, oh, you're gay, and you're like, no, I'm not no, gay. I'm not. You might be. <laughs> Dude, how many straight dudes? So many. How many straight dudes might it's be funny. a little bi? If, if, <laughs> if you, at the thought of being gay makes you like, you might be. You might be. <laughs> Just like, think about it. Yeah, you should at least ask the question if your response is, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> not gay. I'm, not, I'm so not gay. I'll kiss you right now, bro. I'm not gay. I'll prove it. Yeah, dude, straight dudes who are so afraid of like gayness make me laugh. Or just so femininity hard. in general. Exactly. Feelings. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But men have so many feelings. Duh. And they just deny it. Duh. That's why it makes me giggle, man. You know? And like, <laughs> dudes have this thing if we're walking next to each other, like it happens to anyone. Sometimes your hands touch, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes your hands accidentally hold for a second. <laughs> and those guys who are real uncomfortable with it, they're like, oh, no, dude. It was an accident. I love to just be like, stop holding my hand. Like, exactly. Hold it. Or like, exactly. or just hold it. If it's if it happens more than like twice, I'll usually just grab just, somebody's hand. Yeah, at that like, point, we're doing at it that, now. Like, that's the appropriate response. Mm -hmm. Is like, well, now we're just holding hands, bro. Yeah. Makes it a little less weird. It breaks the tension. Don't be it's weird. Like, oh my God, we almost. It's like, just put just your hand in my back pocket. Hand. Quit being weird. Pinch a little. <laughs> 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 um, Bella, thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting thanks me. Thanks for being this here. This is cool. Um, you already offered a nice tip about coming out, but I do like to leave the audience with one little nugget of wisdom from each guest. So let me think on what I want it to be on. Okay. Um, I guess just uh, what tip would you have for people on uh, just being okay with who they are? You're only YOLO, right? It's your only life. Don't live it for anybody besides yourself. Cause like a lot of people that I've come across are like, I can't do this like major. My parents want me to do this thing. It's like, are your parents gonna be doing it? Is it is it your parents' life? It's your life. Like just be as a, a authentically you as you can be, and you're not gonna like have any regrets in life. Is how oh, I see it. Awesome, I love that. Ooh, I actually want one more because you okay. you do have a nice uh, group of friends around you or multiple circles of friends, and they actually all were cohesive together. That's a beautiful thing. So I know a lot of people ask me about like how do you make friends as an adult, or like how do you pick good friends, or how do you know? So do you have any? Extra tip on um, choosing your friends as an adult. I feel like with me personally, I'm glad that you got to see like the good group of people that I've been around, but I've gone through like a lot of like bad friends and it might even like relationships are two ways. So like I might've been a bad friend. That's why they were a bad friend mm. kind of thing. But I think you, like the grass is greener where you water it. So if you really want to be friends with somebody, I mean, not be like too aggressive with it, but like, I don't know. I recently learned I'm autistic. So <laughs> I'm like figuring this whole social thing out myself a little bit. I don't have like a, just a generalized tip, but like okay. if you just have a genu genuine interest in people, like you're going to make friends pretty easily. Yeah. Rather than like trying to make yourself interesting. Yeah. Be interested. Love that. Love that so much. Um, Thank you so much. And did you hear what Bella said? I love that quote so much is the grass is greener where you water it. We all know the feeling of the grass is greener on the other side. Just wherever you look to compare, it might seem greener and then you get over there and it's on the other side now. Um, but the truth is in your life, the grass is greener where you water it, where you put time, energy, love. However, I'm gonna addendum to your tip. Um, 
some friends, you got to realize when uh, the grass you're watering um, sucks. Okay. <laughs> so also know how to recognize when that grass is shitty grass and go find some new grass, okay? Because <laughs> some people are watering a pile of dirt and poop. Stop you know? watering manure. Exactly. Go find the grass. Ex exactly. <laughs> go find grass. You got to learn, oh, wait, I've been watering <laughs> this piece of shit for Just two years. Just look around <laughs> And uh, shit doesn't grow, okay? Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Uh, everyone go follow if you haven't already, but I'm sure you do. Only Jayus. So unfunny that we have to laugh. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love learning that. I, I, I'm going to laugh every time I see it now. Um, yeah, go, go follow Bella on all the things. Super great, fun content. And uh, I'll see you at your next birthday party. I'll bet. Drop a like on the podcast, too. This was a good one. Thanks, dude. Thank you. <laughs> so fun. I like this. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs>